Today, you are going to get a quick review of how to solve for a variable in an, an equation. We are going to get a quick review for how to solve for a variable in an equation. Now, if you see any of these words, they all really mean the same thing. Solve, isolate, and find all just mean to figure out the value of a variable. This is one of my favorite math jokes. Find x. Here it is. I found it. I'm done. Sadly, it's not always that easy. Copy down these steps. Step 1. Circle the variable you want to find the value of. Step 2. Cancel out the surrounding numbers using the opposite operation. Now, here's the deal with step two. There's often more than one surrounding number near your variable that you have to cancel out, and it matters which one you cancel out first. In fact, if you cancel out in the wrong order, you actually get the wrong answer. So this part is important. Copy down here this tip. Order that you cancel out in is always opposite of PEMDAS order of operations. But here's a shortcut way of looking at that opposite of PEMDAS. Really, what that ends up meaning is that you start with canceling out the numbers farthest away from the variable first. A good visual for this is uh, making an analogy to peeling an onion. So you know how an onion, when you cut it open, it has layers, and then there's the center of the onion. If you look at this example problem here, you can treat the variable x as the center of the onion, and each number that's nearby, you could treat as a layer of the onion. That 10 is closest, so it's the inner layer of the onion. The 12 is farther away, it's the outside layer of the onion. So what it means to peel the onion is you go in the order of the numbers farthest away from the x that you circled as the center of your onion here. So you have to cancel out the 12 before you cancel out the 10 to get the right answer. We're going to try that with problem number one in just a moment. Before you really start solving the problem, it's a good idea to both circle the variable you're solving for, that's step one, and then draw a line under the equal sign so you can easily differentiate what's on the left side of the equation from what's on the right side. Now a quick note about the problems you're solving on the notes today. I am going to ask you to write down steps that you often do in your head. There's two reasons for this. The first reason is the techniques you're learning that you don't necessarily need on the shorter problems, like number one, you will need on the longer problems we'll get to at the end of notes. So it's better to master the techniques now, even if you don't need them for the simple problems, than to uh, get thrown in the deep end. And two, when we start writing proofs next class, uh, the emphasis changes from just solving, which allows you to do many steps in your head, to proving that your answer is correct, which requires you to write down every single step. So that's why I'm going to ask you to literally write down everything you see on uh, the screen for each problem, even if it's something you could do in your head. Now let's look at problem number one. If x is the center of the onion, the 10 is closer, it's the inside layer, the 12 is farther away, so the 12 is the outside layer of the onion, you have to peel it away first. Now how would you cancel out a minus 12? The opposite of minus 12 is plus 12, so that would cancel it out, and as you recall, whatever you do to one side of an equation, you must do to the other side. So if you write plus 12 on the left side of this blue line here, you have to write a plus 12 on the other side. You want to keep your equation balanced. So it's 1 plus 12 per side of the equal sign. So this is the equation you have now, after you have, write the plus 12 plus 12. Get in the habit of always circling the x, or whatever variable you're solving for in each step, because that's a great visual of what the center of the onion is, what you're trying to get by itself. To get rid of the 10 in front of it, you have to remember that if there's nothing written between a number and a variable, it's implied multiplication. It's invisible time sign. So that's really 10 times x. To cancel out the times 10, you would do the opposite, dividing by 10. And whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other. 
and you get your answer is x equals 4.4. We're going to go through the same process with one just a little bit harder, but the steps are the same. You still start by circling your variable and drawing a line under the equal sign so you can differentiate left side from right side of the equation. Now if x is the center of our onion, what's the outermost layer? What's farthest away from that? If you're thinking plus 15, very good. So that's what you have to cancel out first. You actually get the wrong answer if you cancel out one of the other numbers, like the 2 or the 3, before the 15. So to cancel out the plus 15, you minus 15 from both sides. Make sure you have 1 minus 15 on each side of the blue line, because it's 1 per side of the equal sign, to keep the equation balanced. So now your equation looks like this. The 3x over 2 is still there, and then 0 minus 15 is just negative 15. Circle the x in every step. Now figure out which number is farther away from the x this time. I would say it's the over 2. Now to cancel out in over 2, remember fraction bars are really just another way to talk about division. So that's a divided by 2. The opposite of that would be times 2. And whatever you do to one side of an equation, you must do to the other. So write a times 2 on the other side by the negative 15 as well. So the times 2 cancels out with the divide by 2 on the left. And now you are left with 3x equals negative 30. Circle the variable, and then figure out what you need to do to get it by itself. It's times 3. To cancel it out, you would do dividing by 3 and you get your final answer. Next, we're going to start throwing in grouping symbols. Go ahead and draw the line under the equal sign. There's a couple different ways to solve a problem like this, but the most popular when you see a number directly outside of parentheses is to remember that if there's nothing between the number in parentheses, it's invisible times. So it's two times the whole quantity x plus five. When you have two times a whole quantity in parentheses, you just distribute that two, which will look pretty familiar. Two times x is two x, bring down the plus sign, two times five is 10. Now you can circle the variable and figure out which number cancels out first, the two or the 10. If you said the plus 10 had to cancel out first, well done. So you do the opposite, once on each side of the blue line, each side of the equation. You circle the x again. To cancel out the times 2 in front of it, you divide by 2. And whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. And you should get x equals 1. Now, occasionally you have uh, a number times a quantity in parentheses, but it's something that you don't really want to deal with by distributing. Like you could distribute two fifths to everything in the parentheses, but um, it's just kind of a pain to distribute a fraction. So I'm going to show you an alternate way to work that will get rid of the fraction. Do you guys remember learning about reciprocals? A reciprocal is a flipped version of a fraction. The idea is if you multiply reciprocals together, they cancel each other out. So I can, cancel, I can treat the 2 over 5 as the outside layer of the onion and cancel it out first instead of distributing it. And it will get me the same answer, but with a lot less work. So I can figure out that the reciprocal of 2 over 5 is 5 over 2. And if I multiply that by that, the fives cancel each other out, the twos cancel each other out. I just have to remember whatever I do to one side of an equation, I must do to the other. Now, on the other side of the equation where I have eight times five over two, it's much easier to multiply two fractions together than a whole number in a fraction. So let's rewrite that eight as eight over one. And then we can multiply straight across. 8 times 5 is 40, all over 1 times 2 is 2. 
and when you rewrite the left side of the equation, you don't need the parentheses anymore because there's nothing left outside the parentheses. Now let's simplify that fraction, 40 over 2. 40 divided by 2 gets you 20. And now to get x all the way by itself, you have to cancel out that minus 2 by doing the opposite, once on each side of the equation. And you get your final answer. Go ahead and draw a line under the equal sign. This is like number four. You could distribute one half, but it would probably be easier to multiply by the reciprocal. What would the reciprocal be? If you said the reciprocal is two over one or just two, well done. So multiplying by two over one cancels it out. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other. But because the other side, it's, it's a whole number four, then I'll write the two in whole number version in, instead of fraction version. That cancels out what's outside the parentheses, so we don't need to write the parentheses themselves anymore, just what's inside of them. Circle the x. Decide whether you have to cancel out the three or the five first, which one's farther away from the x. get x all the way by itself by canceling out the times 3 in front. And you get your final answer. Write down this note at the top of the page. Sometimes you have to combine like terms first before going through the rest of steps to solve. If like terms are already on the same side of the equal sign, you want to add them together. So if you look at number 6, you actually have variables in two different places in your equation. But because both terms with variables are on the left side of the equal sign, you could just rewrite your equation so they're next to each other. Take a moment to do that. And then say, well, I know that 8x plus 2x, they're like terms, so I can just add them together and that'd be 10x. And then 6 plus 24 are like terms because they're both constants without variables, and that'd be 30. So if they're on the same side of the equal sign already, you do not need to minus underneath to move a number anywhere. They're already both on the left side of the equal sign. You just add them together. So when you have like terms on the same side of the equal sign, this is important. You just squish them together. 8x plus 2x is 10x. 6 plus 24 is 30. Now, it's like your previous problems where you can circle the x and work to get it by itself. The 30 is farther away from the x, so you'd have to cancel it out first. And then you can divide by 10 to get x all the way by itself. Try the same thing with number 7. Notice that there's variables in two different parts of the equation, but they are both on the left side of the equal sign, so you can just write them next to each other. You can sh just shuffle your terms around. And then you can squish like terms together, add your like terms. I want to point out that when you have a negative 5 plus 2, uh, different sign numbers subtract, so it's like 5 minus 2, but you keep the sign of the bigger number, so negative 3x for negative 5 plus 2 there. And then 2 plus 6 plus 13 is 21. And then you work to get x by itself. The 21's farther away, so you have to cancel it out first. And then I want to point out that there's still nothing between the negative 3 and the x, so it's still m invisible multiplication sign. It's still a negative 3 times x. So to cancel it out, make sure you divide by negative 3 so that you cancel out not just the 3 but the negative sign. Negative 9 divided by negative 3. Negative divided by negative gets you a positive. 9 divided by 3 gets you 3. Right 
Write down this note at the top. Get like terms on the same side of the equal sign, then add them. So here, you notice that you have the potential to distribute, so let's get that done first. Go ahead and distribute. Shouldn't look like that. But now when you circle the x's, I want you to notice that they are on opposite sides of the blue line. They are on opposite sides of the equal sign. This is when you would have to subtract from both sides to get them on the same side of the equal sign. Uh, personally, it doesn't matter if you get both of them on the left side or the right side of the equal sign, but I like to, um, myself, I like to choose a smaller number to move. So 4x is smaller than 6x, I'll usually choose a 4x to move. So to cancel out the 4x, I would minus 4x from both sides, once on each side of the blue line, and that would move it to where to the left side of the equal sign where it can combine with the 6x. Now it's a much more straightforward problem, and I can circle x and get it by itself. Now, if you see distributing as part of a longer problem, that's usually a great place to start. So go ahead and distribute. 2 times y is 2y. Bring down the minus sign. 2 times 21 is 42. And then bring down the minus 3y at the end of all that. Now, if you look at that, you have y's actually in three different places. Two of the y's are already on the same side of the equal sign. So you want to write them next to each other first. Since they're already on the same side of the equal sign, you can shuffle them around. And then add those like terms. 2y minus 3y is negative 1y. Essentially, when you have 1 positive, 1 negative, 1 positive, 2, 1 negative, 3, you do larger minus smaller, 3 minus 2 is 1. And you keep the sign of the bigger number. Bigger number is negative, so it's negative 1. Now, you want to circle y, but it's still two places, so you still need to work to get those y's in the same place. I usually take the smaller number to cancel out. Whatever you do on the right side of the equal sign, you have to do on the left side of the equal sign, so that moves the 1y so that it can combine with the 5y. And now you've got a variable in a single place in your equation, and you can work to isolate it. 